pulling close. I want a good look at her before we dock, I said to the helmsman. Looks to be a shipwreck, boss. I see that, you nitwit, but I'd like to see what's on the other side first. Let's do a lap around. All clear. Looks like a chunk's missing from its side. Most likely from a Neogi. Okay, we're going in. Bonlin, you and Yagu first. The two men nodded and left from their ship, agilely gliding to the ghost ship and landed on the deck. They quickly searched and nodded an all clear sign. Let's go, in and out. Get what you can and we're out in five minutes, tops. I yelled and followed my crew over to the ship. I landed, rolled, and charged into the captain's quarters. Oh, fuck, I said, staring into a shooting tube of acid. I rolled on the floor, my eyes gone, listening to the screams of my crew behind me. Many sages have hypothesized that the plasmoids derived from a simple amoeba that magically developed into oozes that eventually formed plasmoids. They are extremely dexterous, and when asleep or lose consciousness, they lose all rigidity. This can be dangerous for them, so they choose their sleeping quarters with great care. They alter their bodies to form pouches to carry items and air pockets to produce sound. Their nerves are a mass called ganglia that they use to detect senses. They can alter them in hear or see very sensitive things or even deafen those senses. They have no internal organs, but can create fibers to form muscle, gases, and cavities to produce all functions a humanoid can produce. The only constant organ is its brain, which is a mass of ganglia. They eat like an amoeba and do not need mouse, but need oxygen that they absorb through their skin and can hold their breath for over an hour. They excrete waste through their pores, which makes them bad roommates. They reproduce by exchanging DNA with another, just by contact. Then, from instantly to years in the future, they simply divide in half. The only difference that it only has the base knowledge of its parent. They are immune to poison and acid. Cold only slows them, but they are very sensitive to heat and piercing weapons do little to no damage. They usually attack with multiple limbs. Most plasmoids are found in clans with strong ties to their community. They covet treasure and power, thus making the adventuring life tempting for many. They do enjoy their philosophical debates, storytelling, and are in many positions of political power throughout wild space. They are also known to have a childlike curiosity and also known for their loyalty. D. Gleesh. These large, wet blobs resemble a bowling pin. White to cream colored, they constantly sway and bob. They prefer no legs and short, stalk-like arms. They employ two ganglia masses for eyes and usually have no mouth. They produce four arms and can lift up to 10,000 pounds for almost 30 seconds. They can make these limbs as fast as a human can move theirs, and a net would simply slide through it. A man-sized one could stretch up to 50 feet and weigh up to 8,000 pounds. At night, they secrete a calcium-based substance to help hold its shape while it sleeps. Once it awakens, it absorbs it back into its skin. They cannot jump, but are agile climbers. They prefer to attack with forearms, two as fists, and two as shields. When they attack, they become excited and begin booming. Anyone listening to this must make a saving throw or become frightened. Anyone within 20 feet becomes paralyzed. The Degleesh must maintain concentration throughout this effect. These are your tanky plasmoid that lower their AC with their shields. I'd give them half cover. Then they go in for some heavy damage close in. The Delnoric. The Delnoric are very interesting, and I'm just going to read from the MC-17 verbatim. The Delnorks prefer a short, stocky, bi- or multi-pedal form. Their arms and legs are usually identical. They prefer mitten-like hands, round, stump-like feet, and a necklace head. They have two auditory and two visual ganglia, which they place upon their heads in the locations common to most bipeds. They also form a mouth orifice and even occasionally produce slight nose-like appendages, though they can't smell. What distinguishes Delnorex from the other plasmoids is their cover. They can form a half inch thick, stiff leather hide. This hide is, is simply a mesh of their body fibers that can allow it to dry out. As it grows thicker, it often cracks where the Delnorex bends. Delnorex usually look like they have wide strips of leather hanging off their bodies. This coating is gray to brown in coloration. Delnorex have a lot less plasma than the, uh, most plasmoids. For this reason, it makes them much longer to transform. A typical appendage requires a full turn of concentration. They cannot flow with their covering in place. Thus, they form legs for 
locomotion with no covering. Delnorx cannot form an appendage smaller than five inches in diameter. Without the covering, a one inch diameter appendage can be formed. If they must form fingers, they tear holes in their covering and extend unprotected appendages. A Delnorx brain cannot be squashed any smaller than five inches diameter. Delnorx can support up to 12,000 pounds for several hours when contained within their covering. They commonly have several lip-like areas on their bodies. These open into leather pouches in which they keep their possessions. Delnorx are capable of carrying up to a thousand pounds of items. However, since they must be very dense in order to be small enough volume, this amount is rarely carried. Small Delnorx can stretch their bodies upward to a height of 10 feet, 15 feet if man sized and 20 feet if large. A Delnorx covering protects it from drying out, thus it can adventure in desert climate. It also enables it to sleep while only marginally losing its form. In combat, they attack with three appendages and can breathe in large volumes of air and excrete it in a small tube that sends a shock wave requiring those within 20 feet to become paralyzed. On top of that, they produce digestive acid that they excrete 20 feet at those nearby, causing 2d10 damage. They get along but aren't great friends with the Bigish, who they refer to as the soft one, and prefer doors in their lust for gold. The Ontolac. Ontolac skin can turn as hard as brass or as soft as cloth, and they use this ability to lure those in its grasp. An Ontolac can enter a dormant state for years without feeding. They are massive in size, with the smallest being the size of a spell jamming vessel. In fact, it can spell jam itself using its own stomach acid. It attacks with giant pseudopods that break through a hatch or cracks on the deck, hitting for 2d10 each. It usually tries to grapple or digest those victims or toss them into wild space. It usually tries to grapple as an attack and either toss them into wild space, digest them, or slam them onto the deck. It can also detach itself with a plunger-like pseudopod to do major damage to other ships, then reaches over with its other arms to draw the ship closer. When killed, it explodes in a blast of acid, equal to half its hit points. These are interesting mimic-like creatures that you can use to jump and surprise your players with that unexpected encounter. And you can think out of the box what do you think of the plasmoids and have you used them in your game? Please leave a like and subscribe if you want more videos. Thanks.